Hey guys, so I don't make random videos just driving around and talking that often. I do actually really like making these types of videos and I also don't watch the new car market that often, uh, especially for like new supercars. I'm not gonna lie, usually the new stuff doesn't really intrigue me because the way, you know, supercars were heading until recently, I guess. But since Monterey Car Week and since the cars that have come out since, I've really started noticing a trend and noticing something, something I really like about what I think might be the future of the car market. And, you know, this is just purely my thoughts, my opinions, what I think is gonna happen. I'd love to hear your guys' opinion, if you guys think I'm right, if I'm wrong, what you guys think of what's gonna happen in the new supercars. Now, when I say I wanna talk about the supercar market and the future of that, I'm not talking about the values. I feel like for the last two years, ever since this crazy market, that's all anybody's been talking about. I'm talking about actually seeing what's on the market, what kind of cars are getting built, what are manufacturers coming out with, what are people demanding, just from what I'm seeing in the last few months. So I feel like before, you know, in the last two years, everything was just getting a lot more just advanced. Everybody cared about getting faster, also about kind of, you know, being more environmentally friendly. So you saw a lot of, a lot more EV supercars, a lot more hybrids. A lot more of that and a lot less of like driver involvement. People didn't really care about that. They just wanted to have the fastest numbers on the on paper. They didn't care about what the driving feel really was like. Now at the Quail this year, you know, a lot of new cars come out. It's kind of the most important event of the year. And you know, usually you walk around there and you see all the new hybrid supercars, what's the fastest car, what's around. But this year that wasn't really the vibe. That was it was more about the driving experience of cars, the cool cars that come out that are truly, truly, truly enthusiast cars, but from the top manufacturers, they usually come out with cars to just be better than the last. A great example of that would be the Koenigsegg CC850. I'm not gonna lie, I don't know if I just didn't really pay attention to it or I wasn't really keeping up with it, but I didn't know that Koenigsegg's coming out with a new supercar for the Quail. I just woke up the day of, and suddenly it's everywhere, Koenigsegg released a new car, and I was at the Quail that day, I went to see it, and this thing was a gated manual transmission. Now, when I say this thing was a gated manual transmission, I'm sure we've all looked in the car and we know that it's partially gated, partially automatic. But nevertheless, up until then, everybody thought last gated car ever made would be like a 2015 R8, I believe that's the last one. We're never gonna see a gated car again. So anything gated just flew up in value like crazy, and it was kind of just a thing of the past. But here, Koenigsegg is bringing it right back. So the next car I moved on to at the Quail was the new Bugatti. So this is the convertible version of the Chiron Diva, whatever you wanna call it, but on that platform. And that car was very hyped up because it's gonna be the last 16 cylinder Bugatti, which is, again, I hope it's true. You know, you never know now, people are kind of going back and changing it, but Bugatti said, I think that it's gonna be the last 16 cylinder car. After that, I'm not sure if they're gonna go hybrid, if they're gonna go EV, but I'm sure there's gonna be some sort of electric engines involved with their next hypercars. And then we moved over to the Porsche booth, which had the new GT3 RS. Now, this GT3 RS on paper, you know, with horsepower and stuff is very similar to the old one but it just looks like it's a lot more fun to drive, a lot more aggressive, just a lot more of a race car than the last GT3 RS. So it kind of shows you that they're also leaning towards um, you know, a driver's car. They're not, who knows, the GT2 RS might be a hybrid, but I also heard some rumors that there might not be a GT2 RS, so we just don't really know, but that car wasn't really made to be anything environmentally friendly. They weren't trying to get, you know, I don't think it's breaking any like lap records, especially with some of the really, you know, high performance hybrid supercars that are out. I don't think it's gonna break any of their records, but it just seemed like a very fun, very aggressive car to drive. And the last car at the Quail that really stuck out to me was the Gordon Murray T50. I know obviously that car was not launched at the Quail this year, um, but it is a car that was there and was on display and I really did take a look at it. And again, that's a V12 manual, old school type of car. I'm sure the aero and the suspension and all that is very modern and very, very high performance. But again, it is really based off driver involvement. It's not really about the numbers. It's not about that. It just, for you to have a lot of fun driving it, like it just, to be really involved in the drive. Then obviously big news, Pagani dropped the new car yesterday. And guess what? It's a manual. 
not only is it a manual, it's a gated manual, which is crazy because Pagani wasn't one of the car, car companies doing gated manuals before. So around the time Ferrari was making, you know, if you get a gated manual 43360, you could get a manual Zonda, but they're not gated manual. So Pagani now, when they went back to a manual, which I heard rumors for the last few years that it's gonna be a manual, made it a gated manual to be even more, you know, driver involved, more fun to drive. Obviously the trend now is all the classic cars or, you know, modern classics are the gated manual cars. So they see what the actual demand is for cars. And they just said, you know what, why would we let these used cars go up in value so much when we can just have our car be in such high demand by kind of implementing the same thing. So, you know, you could say, oh yeah, the Utopia is gonna be, you know, like a 99 car production is gonna be over before you know it and probably Pagani is gonna go and make a hybrid supercar or an electric. I don't think that's the case because even when the wire came out, they said 100 cars, but then you have your 100 coupes, then you're gonna do your 100 roadsters, you're gonna do your BCs or your Fs or whatever they wanna call their special versions. There will probably be 300, 350 Utopias with different variations. The 99 they announced is probably just the regular coupe. And again, this is Pagani's third ever car. They usually tend to come out with a car every 11, 12, 13 years. So this car is gonna be here to stay for a while. So they might do another line on the side, but this car will be available for sale for a long, long time with an optional manual transmission, or they still have their automated manual like you get in a Wira. But the manual transmission, I'm sure is gonna stay there. Now, obviously, all the cars I've mentioned are, you know, enthusiast cars, hardcore sports cars. They're not the regular cars you see. But then today, Ferrari dropped their new SUV. Now, they announced it with a V12. I believe the first edition is going to have a V12, but it's a naturally aspirated V12 and an SUV where nowadays most car companies are putting smaller turbocharged, if not even hybrid or fully electric engines in their performance SUVs. Ferrari went for a V12 naturally aspirated motor, and even after the first edition, it's gonna be still with a V8. I don't think there's gonna be a hybrid in there, uh, but I think it's just a V8 twin turbo. But they're still kind of going for the big engine, the driver feel, just a lot of passion in the cars rather than just what looks better on paper. So the other thing I noticed, which honestly really made me happy about the type of cars that I like, is that obviously in the last few years, everybody's been seeing these hybrid supercars, electric supercars, you know, the Remax, all that. Even the regular kind of high-end cars like the Lucids, they got a ton of publicity, a ton of marketing, and they're absolutely everywhere, but it kind of seems like nobody really cares. So the thing I notice is the people that have two, three, four million dollars to spend on a car aren't the people that are looking to buy an electric car and have the fastest figures. The people that want to buy a car with heritage, a car with a history, just a car that provides some sort of value other than performance. And because of that, we've been seeing pretty much almost every electric hypercar, supercar only be driven by the manufacturers themselves. Now, a lot of people in the outside world might not know this because obviously the companies have made a pretty good job showing their cars everywhere. And you know, if you're not too into the car community, you might think it's customer cars driving around, but it's pretty much all manufacturer cars. I don't know how many cars Remark actually sold. Like, it's not really something that people are out looking to buy for three to four million dollars. Other than that, people would rather spend their money on a LaFerrari, on a Bugatti, on a Koenigsegg, on something with a little bit more passion. So I think in the last few years, manufacturers noticed this. You know, obviously regulations would like cars to move towards the EV side and they'd like, you know, internal combustion engines to stop. They don't want the manuals. They don't want these big engines. But unfortunately, what sells is that. People are buying the cars for the passion. They're buying it just for the emotions of driving a car that exciting and that unique. So I think they kind of gave up some companies on making the EVs and making everything a little bit more efficient and they kind of looked at the used car market, at the classic market and looked at the type of cars that are going up, the type of cars that are really getting appreciated and they decided, you know what, there's definitely money to be made here. There's people buying these cars, people are loving these things. Why don't we just make the new cars kind of like what the old cars were because then instead of people going and giving their money to, you know, supercar dealerships and use exotic car dealerships, they're just gonna give it straight to the manufacturer because the manufacturer still makes the type of car that they wanna drive. So because of this, I think is why we started seeing these manual hypercars, a lot less stock of hybrid supercars, um, just everything becoming a bit more analog, a bit more back to basics. And it started off, I think, with the manual GT3s. You know, the second they took away the manuals and the GT3s, everybody got mad. And I think slowly from that, they started seeing that enthusiasts and people that are actually spending their hard earned money on these cars aren't the people that really 
want to just buy a car that's going to fit into regulations. They want to buy a car that's going to make them feel special when they drive it. They want a car that, you know, you take out once a month, once a week, whatever it is, but it's a special occasion. It's not just like, oh, here, we're going fast and, you know, that's about it. People got really bored of the stats really, really quick. Yes, an electric car is a lot faster, but honestly, it's kind of boring. So, you know, recently car manufacturers, because that really stepped away from just putting the best numbers on paper from just showing what's the fastest, what's the most efficient, whatever that is, they actually now started to care about how the driver feels and how the driver genuinely enjoys their driving experience. Most people driving these cars, even you know, something like a GT2 RS, aren't driving them on track. They're not actually experiencing what the manufacturer is building the car to experience. So at the end of the day, why not just make something that's more enjoyable for the way a customer actually experiences their car? Now, saying all this, I don't think the electric supercars, the electric hypercars are gonna go away anytime soon. I think they're still gonna stick around eventually. All the technology is gonna trickle down to cheaper supercars. And you know what? The person buying a Huracan, for example, that might be the type of person to buy an electric supercar and that's kind of what's gonna even out the playing field. But saying that, on the other hand, I think some of the technology in the Koenig side, which is some manual, some like you can do manual, you can do automatic, is gonna also eventually get cheaper and trickle down to cheaper supercars. We no longer have to make a decision. Do you want the manual car or do you want the automatic car? I think you're gonna be able to get both in pretty much whichever sports car you want within, I don't know, maybe 10 years. I think that is gonna trickle down. But because of that, both technologies are gonna trickle down and I think we're not doomed in the car world, we're not doomed as car enthusiasts. I think we're about to get to an era where you're gonna have supercars for enthusiasts where it's just driver focus about driver feel and for you know the real car guys, but you're also gonna have the technology from the Remax and all that trickle down where a car like you know a competitor of Huracan might be an electric car, and the person that kind of wants a supercar wants a cool looking supercar isn't necessarily gonna go for the gas car, he's probably gonna go for the EV car, and that's gonna kind of allow us to play around with our big engine cars because you know it's kind of evening it out and we're not really going to be any worse off in the environment than we are right now so you know again that's my opinion i'm not an expert in any of this i'm just saying it based on what i've been seeing in the last few months uh but yeah i think you know the future of cars is still here i don't think they're going away anytime soon and i think we're still going to get to enjoy cars for a very very long time